A few weeks ago, we made a video about things to look out for that make an airplane bad. We were accused of being Debbie Downers, so this week, in the spirit of yin and yang, we decided to take a closer look into what makes an airplane good, new or used, in a more glass half full approach. Yay! Starting with the new in box market, number one, geometry. Wing and stab in line for 3D aerobatic airplanes. For doing 3D or precision aerobatics, planes usually fly best when the propeller axis, wing, and stabilizer are all relatively close in line with each other. Planes built like this tend to roll more cleanly and are a lot easier to knife edge. This is why, even though we have lots of different companies making planes these days, the most popular designs still tend to be extras, lasers, slicks, yaks, and edges. They all have those things close to lined up. You don't see as many Sukhois, Caps, or S-Box these days, and if you do, they have been generously tweaked from their scale outlines to bring things closer to alignment. Of course, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but in general, if a plane is a total unknown to you or anybody you ask, stick with something where everything is lined up. Number 2. Attention to detail Every year, new conveniences make our hobby more approachable and less frustrating. Sure, a manufacturer could pump out some designs year after year and probably keep selling them, but the best manufacturers look at the little things that slow you down in the workshop or at the field and address them. They produce planes that even have a spot carved out in the mold for your receiver and antennas, or including tools such as Allens for the required bolts, or better yet, a toolless assembly. Either way, seeing that some serious time and thought was put into a design can be a sign that it's a great plane. It also shows that some thought went into it, and if they put that much thought into the build and assembly, they probably made sure it flies well too. Hopefully. Number 3. Tall Fuselage for 3D or Aerobatic Airplanes Have you ever flown a slow stick or an airframe without a fuselage and tried to knife edge it? Notice how it went into the ground and mocked Jesus instead of holding altitude on its side? Fuselages, unless they're a stick, do create some level of vertical stability, think of yaw here, in flight to keep the plane tracking straight, at least when it's behind the CG. Knife edges, rolls, and rolling harriers are significantly easier when you have a tall fuselage since when you're on your side, the fuselage creates side force to help you maintain altitude. This is why you don't see anyone flying katanas anymore. Number 4. Popularity despite being from an underground company If everyone at the field has the plane, and it's not available at your local hobby shop, it's usually a pretty good airplane. People like to go out and buy whatever new model their favorite company releases, but when everyone owns a model from a company that's underground, it's usually a good sign. Twisted Hobbies models are a great example. You'll rarely find them in a hobby shop, but once one guy at the field picks one up, owning a Twisted plane spreads like wildfire. There's tons of hidden gems out there, and using others' experiences can be an invaluable tool to finding them. Number 5. No gyro required A gyro can certainly make any airplane fly great, and if a manufacturer says it helps, that's great. But if you're unanimously hearing that an airplane flies great without it, then you know that you have a truly great design. And of course, you could always add a gyro later to make it feel even more locked in. That's not to say that flying with a gyro is a bad thing, or it's not helpful. But if you're trying to decide between Airplane A and Airplane B, and everybody says that they only liked Airplane A once they put a gyro in it, B is probably going to be a lot less of a hassle. Number 6. A big vertical stab and rudder You know what they say about planes with big tails? They have big feet. Wait, jokes aside, just like we talked about with tall fuselages for 3D or aerobatic planes, being stable in yaw, aka the vertical axis, means that the plane will be a lot easier to fly. Especially with high-wing aircraft, having a big fin and rudder can mean less rudder coordination will be required for smooth turns, and the plane will be less likely to drop a wing in a stall. It's not a guarantee, and there are some great flying designs like the Telemaster that don't follow this rule, but a big fin and rudder is usually a great sign. Number 7. A Long Tail GBs, Pits, Corsairs. These are all full-scale designs with a reputation for being tricky in the RC world. And they all have a fairly short tail, as in the distance from the wing to the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Another term for this is short-coupled. A short-coupled airplane can certainly fly well, but they are more touchy to pitch and yaw inputs and more sensitive to good CG than one with a longer tail. Some of our favorite planes like the Telemaster and Turbo Bushmaster all have longer tail moments, which makes them track straighter and smoother. Some extra tail is always a good sign. I'm coming to get that booty. And look, I want to lick them. Number eight, replacement parts availability. There's nothing worse than assembling a new model, taking a quick break, and coming back to your dog having chewed up your tail section. Oh, no. Oh, I think he loves me. Yeah, I got you. 
I got this on camera. So you go online to buy a replacement set of stabs, and what do you know? There aren't any available. All our planes will break one day, it's just a matter of when. Seeing that a plane consistently has spare parts available is one of the biggest green flags that it could have. Number 9. Name Brand Quality Components Specifically for electronics, this means they're both high quality and easily replaced when the plane gets discontinued. If the motor, speed controller, and servos are made and sold separately and have been for a while, it means the manufacturer didn't just package whatever was the cheapest to get the plane in the air. It also means that parts for the electronics will remain available when the plane gets discontinued, such as a motor shaft. But it doesn't stop there. If your plane uses covering, it's a good sign that it's also name brand. This usually means the covering will be more durable and outlasts whatever a coat, and if you have to make a repair, or bribe one of the old timers at the field to make one, it will look good as new and not mismatched like an Ultima on its fifth owner. Number 10. Low Weight Buying a bush plane that feels as floaty as its full-scale counterpart is makes it worth its weight in gold. Outside of bush planes, 3D planes are a lot easier to make perform when they are built with care and every useless ounce is removed. Even tricky designs like warbirds, ducted fans, and turbines become surprisingly manageable when they aren't weighed down by tons of scale details or a perfect paint job. On the flip side, you're sick of hearing about it, and we're sick of flying bush planes with a high wing cube loading, or WCL. Sure, there are some great flying airplanes with a high WCL, but there are a lot more bad ones. So if you have your eyes on something unknown, and when you check into it, you notice that it's half the weight of its competition, odds are that you're in for a good time. This is why the OG and NG Fun Cubs continue to top our list of legit molded foam RC bush planes. Keep them light. Moving on to the used market, number one, excellent wire management. When buying a used plane, seeing great wire management shows some serious time and care was taken on the build, and because of that, the owner was more likely to have taken good care of the model prior to your potential ownership. It's also less work for you to do when you get home and have to set up your receiver in it. Number two, attention to detail without adding too much weight. Cable tie-downs, wire protection, foam mounting for the receiver, battery straps routed and neatly set up are all very good signs to see when considering a purchase. On the contrary, seeing a giant block of solid wood to make the gear stronger is bad. Certain builders go overkill with what they think is reinforcement, and it all adds up to something that will take a hit, and it has to, because when it landed last, it wiped out the dinosaurs. Number three, hinges gap sealed. Gap sealing basically means using covering or tape to cover the gap that's left between the control surfaces and the wing or tail. It usually makes control surfaces more effective and can prevent flutter. As long as it doesn't interfere with movement, this shows that the builder knew a bit more than the average real flight Joe about how to set up an aircraft. Number four, covering edges in good shape. As you fly and transport your wood airplanes, the covering will inevitably start to come off in a couple places. It happens. Part of maintenance is going over it with a covering iron on low and sealing it back down. This means that the plane was likely not abused and that the owner kept up with preventative maintenance. Or it might also mean that the owner barely flew the plane and there's a lot of life left in it. Number five, an honest owner. Having issues disclosed to you right away instead of finding them during your inspection or even after you bought the plane will immediately make you feel better about your purchase. Number six, an owner who has a collecting habit. If the owner you were looking at purchasing from also owns a ton of other similar aircraft, it's a good sign that they really do enjoy the plane they are selling, but they just don't find themselves flying it as much as they thought they might. Or maybe they have a fleet of 3D planes, decided to try out a Warbird, and found out that it wasn't their cup of tea, so they moved on. These are all great reasons to part with a good airplane, and you can scoop it up. Whether a plane is good or bad, it's important to remember that planes have feelings too, and you shouldn't say it to their face, or more specifically, to their owner. What's crappy to you can be another's pride and joy, unless it's a Twimber. If you feel personally attacked due to watching this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up so you can pass your pain on to others. Or maybe even hit subscribe to prove you made it this far into the video. Happy landings, nose over a Twimber for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.